It's very crucial that we uh, put this together because, as you heard, it's affecting many of the rural communities in New York State, uh, and again, many of the uh, communities that I represent. Lack of access to high-speed broadband has had a very significant impact, and we've heard over the years, uh, especially on the rural economies, economic competition, we heard about schools, businesses, uh, households, they all rely, uh, uh, come to rely in this day and age on internet service and the quality of that service. Minimum broadband speeds, uh, people struggled even to achieve that, and it's a barrier for students in rural areas. It limits their research, uh, it limits their college and career choices, and the list goes on. Uh, there's also reports out there to show that by increasing broadband in these areas, we can also increase employment in these areas. Uh, that's a fact at this point, uh, so we have to do a better job of making sure uh, we're penetrating in these rural areas. Uh, that being said, uh, I've, as I said, I deal with this uh, as Senator May pointed out in her district as well. Uh, I deal with this on a daily basis with calls, uh, constituents uh, that contact my office. Um, I know uh, uh, people here are, are here from representing the town of Duanesburg that will be uh, in, in Schenectady County that will be testifying. Uh, I've heard from them how lack of access is uh, a real problem. It's a real issue. Uh, so we'll hear more about that from people testifying today. Uh, just in rural areas across the state, uh, broadband limitations, uh, the main thing is education, uh, but also, again, uh, economic opportunities, including farming, uh, which is a significant uh, factor for our state, a significant economy in our state. So we've got to think about the farming industry and how they also have come to rely on broadband services. Um, the new New York broadband program that was launched in 2015, we, we made a big investment in this, $500 million and uh, we're looking to provide access to everyone in the state. Uh, the program has a mission uh, to, to get to those unserved and underserved communities. We've been through three, round of, three rounds of funding at this point, and with the state's also taken advantage of federal funding from the FCC's Connect America Fund. Uh, some stats that are hopefully we'll talk about today, the Broadband Program Office estimates that through the round three of the new New York broadband program, 99.9% .9 of New Yorkers should have broadband access. And the FCC data shows that New York State has 100% coverage. So despite what we're hearing, the fact is, and we're gonna hear it today, individuals, individ not every individual and not every location has broadband. That's what we're here to talk about today and how we can uh, uh, address this situation, how uh, that discrepancy can be addressed, uh, and it comes down to it comes down to how they determine who has access and who doesn't. Uh, a 2019 Congressional Research Service report identifies that this is an over this overstatement is a significant issue, and I hope to address that during this hearing. Uh, they base basically a census block is considered served if there is broadband service or the strong potential for broadband service at one or more locations. So you see the problem. This is especially problematic in, 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 in rural areas which have large census blocks and may be considered served even if a single, neighbor, a single neighborhood in that census block has broadband service. So that's a real significant issue. Uh, so that being said, uh, I hope to talk more about this and how, we, how the FCC is making some uh, changes uh, to uh, use shape files and calling on carriers to look at that data closer and also provide us an online portal that would give us a chance to dispute these, these uh, areas of coverage. So some progress has been made, but there's still more to do. High-speed internet shouldn't be a luxury limited to high, highly populated areas. Broadband, as you heard, has become an essential part of everyday life, and we have to do more to ensure businesses, families, and schools in our rural communities have equal access to broadband and all the opportunities that it provides. So